Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So before getting into Ruben's crazy story time, I did want to give a huge shout out to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. Okay, so let me start off by saying that me and Ruben have been very consistent with the gym lately, but now that holidays are here, it's very hard to eat healthy, especially in a Mexican household. And it's also even hard to go to the gym sometimes because we do want to be here and spend time with family. But I'm not sure if you guys have heard about the 80 to 20 ratio, which basically means that you can stay fit by focusing 80% on your diet and 20% on exercise so even if we can't always make it to the gym we do try to always watch what we eat and we honestly just love HelloFresh because they make eating well easier with many family-friendly calorie smart pescatarian and even veggie options every single week so HelloFresh is basically here to make your life 10 times easier with fresh pre-proportioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered straight to your doorstep we specifically order from the calorie smart plant since we are trying to watch what we eat and you know going to the gym so so on today's menu we have blackened chicken and cauliflower grits so let's get to it with the holidays here nobody has time to cook nobody has time to wait in huge lines at the grocery stores when you can be relaxing and spending quality time with your family HelloFresh limits meal prep time and cuts out grocery shopping so you're not spending your whole day in the kitchen. I also love how even at full price, it's over 30% cheaper than grocery stores. And with this holiday deal, it's time to try for even less. Ruben and I love cooking HelloFresh together, especially after the gym because it's fun, easy, and very relaxing since the full instructions are included. We love receiving our HelloFresh packages week after week because we don't have to worry about what's for dinner. We also don't have to worry about freshness because with HelloFresh, produce gets to you faster than a grocery store, so it arrives at peak freshness and flavor. Okay guys, so here is our food. I made a plate for myself and a plate for Ruben. So now we're gonna do a taste test for you guys so that way um, we can show you guys how bomb it is on camera. Okay, ready? Wow, this is good. This is so bomb. Mm -hmm. Let's taste the chicken. Mm -hmm. This is really good. Mm -hmm. This is supposed to be a taste test. And we're over here eating the whole plate. I like the sauce on the chicken. Everything is super flavorful. We did this in 25 minutes. And it's only 530 calories. Mm -hmm. Bomb. So if you want to worry less about cooking and spend more time with your family, then make sure to go to HelloFresh.com and enter code RKVLOGS14 for up to 14 free meals and 3 free gifts. Again, that's 14 free meals and 3 free gifts if you guys go to HelloFresh.com and enter code RKVLOGS14. So there was a tragic accident that happened yesterday and at the moment i wasn't thinking about pulling out the camera but now that it's the next day i want to talk about it just so you guys are careful and especially if you feel danger just go with your instinct and try to make the right decision to prevent any accidents from happening so i want to tell you guys what happened and walk you through the story that way you guys can understand it took place around 9 a.m i usually wake up very early and i was just in the morning just drinking my coffee as usual outside enjoying the air enjoying the weather you know so my grandpa comes up the hill and very exhausted. Mijo, mijo, um, can you help me out with something? And I was like, sure, like, what is it that you need help on? He's like, my truck, the battery actually died. Can you help me get the, the battery pack that's in the RV, which is over here? He's like, can you help me get the battery pack that's in the RV? He's like, it's very heavy and, and I need help. And I was like, yeah, like, sure, like, let's do it, you know? So then I go get the battery pack. We start walking down the hill. And he, uh, I was like, what's going on with your truck? He said that the battery died and he just wants, me, he just needs help getting it back on. I was like, sure, it's like an easy fix. But his truck is actually a stick truck. So when we were walking down, I kept thinking like, man, hopefully he doesn't tell me to get in his truck and uh, and turn it on for him because 
I'm a very cautious person and I, don't, I try to stay away from stuff like that just because I know that I'm not a good driver and I don't have a lot of experience doing that. So, Especially driving those kinds of cars because it's not easy. It's not easy and I've drove it before in the past and I've just had such a hard time driving it. Yeah, I remember my dad tried to show him how to drive one and he was literally like bouncing through the streets because it's just hard to get like a smooth ride, you know, from those cars. Yeah, and, and I feel like that's what it is. It's all it's all in your left foot, you know, when especially when you press the clutch, you have to do it like precise. If not, the truck is going to jump. Alright guys, quick pause on the story time. I'm actually gonna walk you guys over here just so I can tell the story better. Yeah, we're gonna show you guys um, like where it happened so you guys can get a better idea. So this is where the incident took place. Is this the dry blood? Yeah, that's... Well, now it's like a little lighter. Or is that paint? What is that? Where are we here? Like, is that dry... No, I think this is the blood. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the blood. Yeah, that's the blood. That's exactly what we Yeah. Thought. Oh, my God. That does look so, like blood. We go down the hill, and my grandpa, of course, he told me, Hey, Mijo, get in the truck. I want you to turn it on while I'm plugging in the battery. And... I kept thinking about what happened to my grandma and how she died. She died from the very same incident. So it was my one year old birthday and she, uh, she was coming from the casino on my way to my birthday and the casino is on a hill. So when she was uh, coming down, her truck broke down. So she gets off the truck, opens up the hood and unfortunately she didn't end up parking the truck right. So when she's messing with the hood, trying to get the truck to turn back on, it turned on and it just ran her over and that's how she ended up passing away. So that was going through your head when Papa was asking you? Yeah, that's exactly what was going through my head and I was I was like worried and I knew, I'm like, I don't think this is a good idea just because I'm not good at driving trucks like this or cars, so I don't really feel comfortable doing it. Yeah. But I, um, I denied it and you know my grandpa's the type of guy who's like, no, like, if you don't know how to do it, you're going to learn how to do it and I'm going to teach you how to do it. Yeah. That's just the, the way he is. You know, he's very old school. So he kept insisting, no, you're going to get in the truck. You're going to get in the truck and you're going to do it. Of course, I said, okay, like, I'm going to do it. You know, I, everything's going to be okay. Positive thoughts. And I was thinking, I'm like, I'm going to go tell her to come and help me. But I was like, you know what? I don't want to bother him, like, you know, especially over something like this that's easy. It literally takes a couple minutes to do. Yeah. So I just figured that I'll do it, you know? I should have had him get in the truck, to be honest, but he didn't want to. He was, like, so... Your grandpa? Uh, yeah, my grandpa, he was so, like, he, insisting that I get in. Especially now that he knew that I didn't know how to do it. Yeah. He was like, no, I, I, want, I want to be the one to show you, you mm -hmm. know? So I get in the truck. I get in the truck. He's right here in the hood. This is where the car... Um, his truck was parked, by the way. I get in the truck. He's right here on the hood. And, um, and he tells me, turn it on. You know, and he's still in front of the truck. He's like, turn on the truck. And I turn it on, nothing happened. He's like, oh, you got, you're got you not pressing on the clutch. Press on the clutch and then turn it on. And I was so nervous. I was like, man, like, like, why do I know something bad is going to happen? Like, you I had, had a presentiment of yeah. I knew exactly what was going to happen, and I still did it. You know, mm -hmm. I still, I was still like, I'm going to do it. You know, so I turned it on, pressed the clutch. Sure enough, the truck jumps and runs him over. Yeah, so he was in front of the hood. As soon as it jumped, it bumped into Papa. Papa fell back. And the car kind of went on top of him a little bit, huh? Right, and, and uh, he actually blew because the truck hit him so bad that it he blew. So this was, the truck was right here. And keep in mind, the hood was open. Yeah. So not only did the truck hit him, but also the hood hit him. So it went like that, hit him. The truck hit him, like took him all the way over yeah. here. Fell down. Back. And he was just laid out on the ground. He was like this, just laid out. But it was right here, this is the blood stain. Yeah. It was right here just like this. And it hit him so bad that his shoes fell off. And um, and I was scared to get off the truck. Like, I heard him gasping for air and I was just thinking like, man, I really do not want to get off the truck. Tell me why I feel like he's like gonna die. You know, mm -hmm. I was scared that he was gonna die. So I was like, I don't want to get off the truck. And see that. And see that. So it took me a couple, like probably like about 30 seconds to, to, uh, to you know 
comprehend exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. And then that's when I was just like, I'm gonna get off the truck and try to help him out, trying to make good decisions, you know, at the moment. And um, and then and then I was telling him, I'm gonna call 911. I'm gonna call 911. I need help because I really don't know what to do in a situation like that, you know? Yeah. And he was just like couldn't breathe. He couldn't talk. He was like. <gasps> like gasping for oh air my so i was i was like scared panicking. Huh? i was panicking i was like i don't know what to do like it took us a couple minutes him like trying to catch his breath mm -hmm. and then he started asking me stuff like what happened what happened and i was just like okay there's something seriously wrong because he's asking me what's going on like i just ran him over and he's telling me what happened and i just told him like i, I just ran you over on with your truck who was like How'd that happen? And I was just like, I got, and I gave him a quick rundown on what happened and how I ran him over. And then he was just telling me, he was just like, oh, well, you had it on first gear. You know, mm. telling me stuff like that. Like, So he knew exactly what you did wrong. Right. He was, yeah. he was like, he said, well, you had it on first gear. But actually, he had it. He had it on first gear prior. Oh, so you gear. just hopped on, turned it on. And the rest you didn't mess with? Nothing. Oh, All I okay. did was follow directions. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't You're like, go. this wasn't my fault. Yeah, I didn't go in there trying to mess with anything. I, all I did was follow directions. You know, yeah. I, I went in there, turned it on. He was like, the clutch is not turned on. Press the clutch. I did that, right? Yeah. So, anyways, uh, while he was on the ground, he was pretty much like, um, don't call 911. I don't want to call in anyone. He's like, don't yeah. call anyone for help. He's like, let me get up and let me see how bad it is. And if it's really bad, then we'll go to the hospital. Mm -hmm. You know, but he was bleeding from his head. From he had the a back. Huge lump. Huge, guys. It was big. The size of an orange, right here. Yeah. And um, so he gets up after like 10 minutes being on the ground. He gets up and he's just like, like like stumbling like like he said like, I feel dizzy I feel dizzy you know I need to sit down so he sits down in his truck and he was like let's go to Brianna's house I want to see how bad it is mm -hmm. you know I get in the truck and while I'm in the truck I text Karen because he had told me specifically I don't want you telling anyone until I see how bad it is I text Karen hey Karen I just ran over my grandpa and uh I don't know why, but she didn't believe me. I think she thought that I was like pulling a prank on her. It's because I was expecting like a phone call. Like if it was an emergency like that, I was like, okay, he would have called me. Why is he texting me like, just like just chilling, saying, hey, by the way, just texted, just ran over my grandpa. So I was like, are you pranking me? Yeah, and and um, she thought it was a prank, and I was just like, no, like I'm being serious because yeah. I didn't want to call, especially. Yeah, you wanted me, to like, respect his choice. You know, yeah. maybe I don't know what was going on with him, but I. I should have probably caught, I should have probably like took a little bit more serious just mm -hmm. because he obviously wasn't in the right state of mind and yeah. he's asking me what's going on, what's happening. And you know? so I didn't realize it was true until Ruben was like, dude, it's not a prank. I'm going to go in there physically to the room and like tell her that it's true. So he comes in, Ruben's literally as white as a ghost, no emotion on his face, so shocked. And he's like, no, he's like, I literally just ran over my grandpa. So I was like, oh my god, so I just quickly put clothes on and like go inside to make sure everything's good. And then um, you were like, I'm going to tell mama, remember? Yeah. But the way that Ruben worded it, um, he really scared me. I thought it was bad. I thought papa was on the ground, like just like, like flat on the ground because he was just completely ran over. I thought like the worst had happened, right? So he scared me. So I was like, Ruben, let's be careful how we tell mama so that way she doesn't get really scared, you know? Yeah. And... Um so when that happened, when that happened, uh, we go tell Karen, he comes out the truck as well, walks yeah. to my room, Karen comes down, sees blood on his face, yeah. sees a huge knot on his head, and that's when she started believing it, and she yeah. started taking the situation more seriously. We go tell Mama, and Mama, oh my God, Mama's so cute. She puts on clothes super quick, and she's like, I don't care what he says, we're going to the hospital right now. Right. Which we, we agreed with, because it's like, no matter, if it was just a little scratch like a little bump on the head yeah like he got hit in the head and whenever you yeah. get hit on the like an injury to the head it's like you always have to go to the hospital it's because serious. you don't know what's going on inside you know so it's just better to be cautious and know that he's good than to be like okay he doesn't want to go let's just stay here and see what happens tomorrow 
right? And but he so, did not want to go. He did not want to go. He didn't want to go to the hospital. He was like, I'm okay. Like, put a put a bandaid on, ice my head. I'll be fine. Yeah. Like. He was so good with it that he was talking about eating right after. He's like, let's go get something to eat, guys. Like, I'm hungry, you know, like, let's forget about what happened. You know, let's yeah. just go get something to eat. He like, was trying to make Ruben feel better because he yeah. saw that Ruben was hella, like, scared. Yeah, he, he was like, it was an accident. He was like, yeah. don't worry, it was an accident. I'm okay. I saw that man. I was just thinking, I'm like, like, are you, like, something's wrong with him. You know, he's talking nonsense. Mm -hmm. He's talking about going out to eat. You know, it's like, I just ran him over. How is he not in any pain? How is he not like, you know, worried about himself? You mm -hmm. know, I would have been worried. I would have been like, let's go to the hospital. I want to make sure I'm okay, you know? And um, so he, anyways, he started saying stuff like that and I started getting worried. I'm like, you know what? I think he does need to go to the hospital. Yeah. I feel like there's something going on with him. Maybe he suffered a concussion. He's delusional, you know? So we, he did not want to go. It took us about an hour or two to convince him. I had to call my aunt. Yeah. I had to call my mom because he did not want to go. My aunt actually drove all the way over here. She was like about an hour away. She drove over here and she made him go to the hospital. Yeah, Biggie came, got him, and luckily um, he listened to her and she took him. And then wow. she was updating on us through text message. Yeah. And she texted us and she's like, okay guys, like we're good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she said that the, he was 100% okay. Yeah. Um, you know, and uh, he, he didn't suffer from anything, no concussion or nothing. No, which uh, is, oh my God, thank uh, God. I was relieved. Yeah. I, I, at that moment, I knew, like, okay, I'm good. You know, like, he's going to be okay. Before he went to the hospital, though, he was like, I'm not going anywhere until I go get something to eat. So I <laughs> actually went to go get him some food, and uh, and I had, I brought it back to him. So he yeah. real quick, and then that's when he left. Mm -hmm. But thank God everything was okay. And, and he was he was good, you know. It could have been way worse. Like I said, my my grandma died from the same incident. Yeah. You know? so, so it's just so crazy that the same exact thing happened to you. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But luckily, you know, it it nothing bad happened. You learned from this. You learned that For if sure. you don't feel comfortable with something, don't do it. I feel like that's what I need to work on too. You know, because sometimes I feel like something bad's gonna happen. Yeah. Like. I'm still doing it, you know. Yeah. I still find myself doing it, and it ends up happening, you know. Mm -hmm. So, so I just feel like next time I definitely need to take uh, my feelings into consideration, especially if I'm feeling like that, you know. Like, yeah. like I know what's gonna happen, but yet I'm still doing it. It ended up taking him about a week to recover. Yeah, he was really sore. But uh, he's good now. He's in good condition yeah and i'm just thankful everything was went out good and i feel like this incident actually brought you and papa a lot closer yeah it did <laughs> it definitely did i feel like um like i'm always watching out for him you know yeah every uh, morning ribbon comes in here into his room and has a cup of coffee with him now yeah we'll have we have coffee together and uh, we talk you know and, and this is good you know this is very good i just feel like um like, I was close to him before, but now I'm even more close to yeah. him because, like, I realized, you know, that, I, like, I'm not saying I never loved my grandma, but I do love him, but, like, yeah. I was like, man, like, he could have lost his life, and I didn't spend enough time with him, you know, mm -hmm. I didn't talk to him more, you know, I didn't, I didn't do all these things that I wanted to always do, you know, because yeah. I always say to myself, oh, I want to talk to my grandpa, you know, I want to talk to my grandma, but I actually never do that, you know. I, or just spend time with them, because yeah, I feel like other people just want someone to talk to and yeah. just spend time with you know that's all it is is you want someone to talk to and yeah. I just feel like um sometimes they get a little carried away with their yeah. talking so nobody really wants to talk to them because it's like oh my god it's like they're gonna get carried away it's like talk. an all day type of thing yeah but it's okay like yeah. you know i realized that like i would rather do that than and, and enjoy those little moments and you know something an accident happened like this and yeah. me not ever being able to talk to them not ever being able to hear their stories, you know? Mm -hmm. Some people have good stories, so. Yeah, so it's just crazy that the blood is still there. It's just completely dry, but I mean, you guys can see, you know, how bad it was. That's a pretty big drop of blood. Yeah, it was, he was I definitely. I thought that was the blood. <laughs> He was definitely leaking the law. All right, guys, so let's go ask Mama how she felt when I told her that I ran over Papa. Mama. Mm. Um, ¿Cómo te... ¿Cómo te sentiste?
Sunt distrus cu o noapte de ea, papa. Bueno, pa' serte honesto, no quiero ser mala, pero yo no le entendí a Karen cuando llegó y me dijo. Pasó algo, yo le dije, ¿qué pasó? Y le dije, yo lo luego mi, mi pensamiento dije, algo le pasó a los niños. Eh. Le dije, a los niños, ¿qué les pasó a los niños? Me dijeron, no, no, son los niños, los niños están bien, es papa. Y dije, ah, ok. Bueno, no, 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 no es que no, sea mala. No, así no, eh. Pero yo siempre toda mi preocupación, o sea, todas mis canciones para los niños. Sí. Uh -huh. Y como que empecé así a temblar y, y me asusté mucho, pero ya cuando me dijo, no, no son los niños, dije, gracias Dios mío. Bueno, no quiero que le pase nada a él, porque como quiera que sea, es el padre de Monique y de Marbella, ¿ok? Y si mis hijas van a estar felices, que su papá va a estar bien, pues todos vamos a estar bien. Y gracias a Dios que no fue nada grave, sí. yo por eso te decía que no te preocuparas tanto, que todo iba a estar bien, uh -huh. porque te miré muy preocupada, no, sí estaba, tenía miedo, y, y yo me puse a orar, pero estaba orando en uh -huh. mi mente, va a estar bien, va a estar bien, tengo que ser positiva, uh -huh. porque ya ves que siempre he sido negativa, pero dije no, tengo que ser positiva para que las cosas salgan bien y ya ves que salió bien. Sí. Que no quería ir al doctor, pero a fuerzas tuvo que ir al doctor y dijo al doctor, pues, que no era nada interno, nada más fue un golpe. Pero no, gracias a Dios no fue nada, nada de qué preocuparse. Pero a su edad y a la mía, pues, ya cualquier golpecito ya, ¿me entiendes? Trae consecuencias. Sí. Pero gracias a Dios está bien, está griti griti, come muy bien, eso quiere decir que está bien. En cualquier ratito no sabemos ni qué hora nos vamos. Ah, no. Y los seres humanos estamos como perros y gatos, estir y afloja, estir y afloja. Nunca sabemos. Es por eso um, le estaba diciendo a Rubén que eh, no es bueno que esto pasó, pero sí vi que los trajo más cercanos a él y a Rubén, sí, ¿verdad? Sí, o sea... Porque cuando pasa algo así, dices tú, qué bueno que no pasó esto, porque no es bueno que una persona se vaya para siempre uh -huh. y quedar en malos términos, sino tratar de estar siempre en buenos términos, sí. o sea, llevarnos mejor. Uh -huh. Somos humanos y vamos a fallar, porque nadie es perfecto, pero tratar de, de llevarnos mejor. Pero a veces el problema cuando la otra persona grita más y tú eres más calmado, como que no se vale. Uh -huh. ¿Y así, entiendes? Sí, así soy yo, porque yo soy bien calmado. Y, y yo también. Me gusta... Y tu abuelo, desafortunadamente, mi hijo, nunca se le va a quitar esa maldita costumbre. Que es bien gritón y, y no. Yo ese tiempo ya pasó. Oh, sí, sí, ya no. Si quiere que, que esta familia funcione bien, tiene que pensar las cosas tres veces antes de piensa con la cabeza, no pienses con los pies. Uh -huh. Y tú también. Eres y yo bien. también, hijo. Tú también eres bien calmada. Yo soy bien calmada. Yo solo cuando me están a friegue, 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 <risa> exploto. Uh -huh. Pero si tú no me molestas, no me ofendes, yo soy bien calmada. Ah. Y este, ¿sabes qué? Yo... Pero abusan. Uh -huh. A veces abusan. Sí. Porque yo, yo así salí yo bien calmado como usted. Pero cuando me están a chingue y chingue, yo pues también. Pues explota uno. Uh -huh. Como dijo mi pastor. No hagas nido en la cabeza. Y yo no entendía qué quería decir con eso. Y me dijo, mira, nido es que todos tenemos derecho a enojarnos. Pero no dejes el coraje para siempre, como odiando a la otra persona. Uh -huh. Tienes que sacar ese coraje, ese odio, para seguir... Porque la vida nos va, nos va a poner constantes pruebas. Sí. 
pero okay. desafortunadamente no todos, uno quiere ser más vivo que el otro y no es justo. Uh -huh. Si alguien te trata mal, ¿por qué vas a tratar tu mal a la otra persona? No, sí. No. Y eso aprendí muy tarde, pero lo aprendí. Uh -huh. Ok, pues qué bueno que nada pasó con papá y todavía está vivo y todavía está fuerte. Está todavía bien. está corobando la borrega. <risa> Gracias a Dios. Mm -hmm. Gracias a Dios. Alright guys, that's it for today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the story time. And uh, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys on the next one.